Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I am Chris and today it's time to take a look at uh, a cooler that I didn't even know Noctua made. I had no idea this thing existed. I reached out to him, I said, hey, home theater PC upgrade kind of situation coming up probably fairly soon. And um, I'm really not happy with the uh, Zalman cooler I have in there right now. Uh, it's kind of been a bear. It was an install that I never did on the channel. I'm kind of glad that I didn't because there was a lot of swearing involved. I was really sweaty by the time it was over. It was incredibly frustrating and I'm actually dreading the idea of having to remove it when I go to actually do the home theater PC rebuild in a different case. Uh, so I was looking for something different. I've got a little bit more space to work with this time around and um, I wanted something that was still going to be fairly low profile but not the gigantic bear that it was to put that Zalman cooler in there. It works well, don't get me wrong, but the install was a pain. So this is what showed up, the NHC14S. And this is a very interesting looking cooler. Uh, just by looking at the back of the box, you can kind of see all of the information on there. It does say it's a C-type top flow design, low profile mode, so you can actually install the fan on the bottom so it takes up even less space. Uh, it does have high clearance, so it is compatible uh, you know, with really a lot of different RAM modules with you know, the taller heat spreaders. And uh, then it does have that SecuFirm 2 mounting system, which is great uh, because that is really handy actually for uh, mounting this on all different kinds of setups. I have, the only thing I haven't mounted uh, an Noctua cooler on yet has been um, LGA 2011. So other than that, I've, you know, I've used this mounting system numerous times, I love it. It's so much easier than pretty much any of the other ones out there that I've dealt with. I'm guessing this is going to be no different. You will find out shortly because I am going to install this on a motherboard I happen to have around so I can do an install walkthrough with you so you'll know how this will actually work. Rest of the goodies on the back of the box, PWM support and a low noise adapter uh, is uh, included. Compatible with past and future sockets. It does come with the thermal compound, a six year warranty and uh, offset designed for the PCIe clearance. So lots going on here. So the best thing to do at this point is just to crack open the box and uh, kind of see what comes inside. After I get done doing that, I happen to have an old uh, ASRock H61 MVITX board sitting around. So uh, this would uh, probably be similar to the kind of board you may be putting this kind of cooler on, you know, if you're doing a small build. And then to go with that, I do have the uh, Core i3-3225 uh, processor uh, that will fit in this board. So we can kind of do a mock install like we were doing the beginning steps of a build up to the point of putting on the CPU cooler. So we'll get an idea kind of how this works. But the first thing to do is crack open the box and uh, see what comes in here and see what this thing looks like. All right, so you've got the usual packaging from uh, Noctua here. Uh, pardon the uh, glare from the uh, lights above there. And it says this is the uh, award-winning uh, NHC14 design that this is based off of. But uh, that aside, let's uh, go ahead and crack this thing open. So I'm going to pull back this very stiff tab there. Their stuff is always very well packaged. Flip that open and you can see that uh, inside you have your usual little different compartments there for Intel, AMD, and the accessories. So first things first, here is the SecuFirm 2 mounting system for Intel. And pop that open and you can see inside of there, uh, you have the Dear Customer LGA 2011 install instructions. So they give you the instructions for 2011, which you can see it does say uh, right up there in the corner. And then you get the same thing for LGA uh, 1150X, so 1155, 1150, you know, what have you. Then you have the uh, mounting brackets, so we'll be busting these out later, as well as the screws and uh, all of that good stuff. So um, all the goodies that you'll need are in there. AMD box isn't quite as big because it's going to rely on some of the things that you already have from AMD. So let me pop that one open. And again, there's your AMD instructions. And then here is basically all you need for AMD. You're going to be utilizing the back plate for the AMD install um, that is already part of the AMD motherboard system. So that one doesn't require quite as much. And then the accessories. This one's, there we go. 
So this is where you're gonna get your goodies, uh, like all of your um, things, the low noise adapter, the thermal compound, uh, you have the uh, mounting brackets in there, I think for the additional fan, and then uh, the screwdriver tool to actually get everything done. So that's always nice, put that back together. Okay, now it's time for the star of the show. Go ahead and lift off this plate here and you can see, boom, there's the uh, plate that's gonna make the connection to your CPU. Flip that up and I'm just gonna go ahead and guess on this one, but yep, that slides out. So now we can move that box kind of back a little bit out of the way. And now you've got this. So at this point, uh, you can see here is the cooler itself in the box. And now that should just slide out, I'm guessing. Maybe, maybe, nope, you gotta slide these open. And now it's gonna slide out. I'll take this piece off. And I don't wanna cut myself on the fins, so I'm going to be careful. Scoot that out of the way. And there is the cooler. So they've got it set in low profile mode the way that it is right now with the fan mounted on the bottom. So you're essentially gonna be like this when you're installed actually on your motherboard. And the idea here is, you know, on most motherboards except for 2011, uh, your memory module should be over on this side, so you can actually get some good cooling going on uh, with some airflow moving around those as well. But you can definitely move the fan up to the top if you have memory modules that are not low profile and you need that kind of clearance. You just simply swap the fan. It does pop out right here with this little uh, lip here. Uh, you do have to be careful. Like I said, you can cut yourself on these fins. They are a tad bit on the sharp side. Uh, I have done that many, many, many a times. So I think the best thing to do now is actually just to go ahead and get an install going in this thing and see how this works out. Well, all right, so here are all the goods, everything that you're gonna need to kind of get rolling on this particular portion. So let's assume you're doing a build and you're kind of on the first step. You're just prepping the motherboard, installing the CPU, the memory, and the cooler. Um, we're gonna kind of go through a mock situation like that is uh, kind of what's happening using the NHC 14S. So step number one is to get out the tools that you're going to need. So LGA 11.5X, go ahead and get out your instructions and peruse them. They don't take a whole lot to really get through and they're pretty straightforward as far as how they, you know, present everything. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to, they do have an area on the in the instructions that are kind of designed to show the orientation. So you wanna make note of that as you're going, whether you want it sitting one way or another. In this case, I'm gonna to wanna to put the mounting brackets on uh, top and bottom, uh, kind of running in parallel to each other from the socket. So that's the next thing to do, get the motherboard out. This is actually the motherboard, if you remember the original FreeNAS build, uh, this was the board I used in that, if I remember correctly, and then I upgraded to that ASRock server board, uh, which was a you know really nice upgrade because I could go to DDR, or not DDR, but, uh, well, it was DDR3, but it was ECC. All right, so there's the little baby ITX board right there, so just chilling, and I can actually tell you by looking at this that the cooler is probably actually gonna be bigger than this board. It's probably gonna hang over a little bit more than the board itself, because looking at this, we're probably gonna mount kind of that way. Now, one thing I'm seeing is there are a lot of surface mount type items on this board, so I'm wondering if I'm gonna have the clearance I need to be able to do this, because you see I've got a lot going on here, and I've got some stuff sticking up here, but this being an ITX board, everything obviously is pretty crammed together. Okay, so we're ready to go. The very first thing to do is I like to lay out all my parts. I've got them set off to the side off camera, um, everything I'm going to need from the uh, 11.5X kit, in this case, 11.55 socket. And uh, we're gonna do the CPU install. So I'm gonna bust out the CPU. And I am working with that Core i3. Like I said, this is 11.55. So I'm going to actually open up the socket, remove the socket protector and then drop in the CPU. And when you do the CPU install, uh, you will have little notches that will make sure that you put this in the correct direction. Uh, so you really can't, um, you can't seat this incorrectly. So that just drops in place like so. Lower down the uh, arm and then go ahead and lock everything in place. 
Okay, then once you've got that portion complete, I'm going to uh, go ahead and install the memory modules. Okay, so now the memory is in, the CPU is in, everything is in, we are ready to rock and actually do the install for uh, the CPU cooler itself. Now I'm doing some clearance checks. Uh, I'm gonna actually line this up and it looks like on this particular setup, uh, with this being ITX, we're actually gonna have a clearance issue with the PCI Express slot using this particular cooler. So that in mind, if you were going to be using um, anything other than the integrated graphics, you would actually probably want to get some kind of an adapter or something that you could plug in here to kind of move this slot. You know, they make those cables if uh, your case is you know, friendly with being able to do that, if you have more than one slot, this cooler probably is actually more uh, friendly to actually use in uh, a micro ATX setting instead of um, the ITX like we are using here uh, because we are going to end up blocking off that slot, I believe. However, that being said, I'm not gonna let that stop from showing how the install process actually works because let's say that you just weren't going to use that PCI Express slot and you were going to use this in some kind of a, a server situation and you really just don't care. We'll just assume that and continue forward but uh, that is something to keep in mind. This cooler and ITX boards you may have a problem. So the next thing you want to do is grab this back plate and you'll notice that it does have a little uh, indent on one side and not the other and that is because when you look at the back of the board you will see that you have one area that uh, has a screw in the center and then the other two screws are here. That's going to line up with that like so. So just drop that in and everything should look just about right. Flip that bad boy back over and you are ready to go. So let me get this board back into an orientation facing the camera and we will continue forward. The next thing you're going to need are these bad boys. These are the spacers and you're just going to drop those into place onto each one of the little posts. And then depending on the orientation of your CPU cooler, you're either going to put these in like this or like this. I want to set this up so that the cooler is actually hanging over the memory. So I'm going to set it up in the uh, configuration where it is running in parallel top and bottom. Uh, on this particular, on the 1155, you are going to be set up for the uh, middle area on this. You've got an area for three different spots for the screws to go. It goes in the middle one. It's always gone in the middle one. I don't think I've ever had it not go in that one. And then the last step is to go ahead and put the screws in place to actually hold the SecuFirm mounting system in place. Ah, it's running away! Crisis averted. Now you'll notice I'm just doing these finger tight to start with. And once I get them to that point, then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna use the screwdriver that came with it. Why not? And uh, go ahead and tighten these down, just not too tight, but you know, enough to get it firm. You don't wanna over tighten anything when you're dealing with a motherboard situation. Okay, so now you've got your mounting system in place and uh, looking at the instructions, Noctua did something fairly interesting on this uh, particular cooler. They have set it up so that when you go to actually screw down the cooler onto the CPU, there are holes, actually, you can see them there, where the screwdriver is going to go through in order to make contact with the spring screws uh, that are actually on the area that mounts to the CPU, the base of the cooler. Now, very, very important thing to note at this point, if you were actually doing this as a legitimate install and not as an example like I am doing, this is the point where you would want to take your thermal compound that comes included, in this case, the uh, NTH1 compound, and you would want to put a little, you know, pea size or so dollop on the center of your CPU. Make sure that CPU is clean. If it's not, get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or something and rub it off. Uh, because this is when uh, you are going to put on your thermal paste. So, I don't want to see in the comments, everybody panicking that I didn't use thermal paste. I'm not going to actually use this board. I'm only doing this install as an example for how this mounts to a motherboard. So this is when you would put on your thermal compound. I can't stress that enough. Do not skip that step if you are actually doing this for real. So now the next step is to remove the plastic covering. And there was actually something on there, so you may want to clean the... Uh, clean that part off maybe as well. And at this point, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Hopefully it's enough. 
And uh, this is now the point when I'm gonna need to stand up to make sure that this is lining up. So at this point, let me try to get everything centered here on camera. It's gonna be hard to see, that's just the nature of it. And I'm going to line it up, and it looks like it lined up pretty well. Now let me check the other side. Yeah, it kind of sat right on there, so uh, I got lucky. So at this point, you're gonna go down. Okay, I have found a flaw in the system. When you go to actually install this, the uh, particular way that this fan is designed, one of the little fan grill things that you can kind of see passing back and forth between the blades there, uh, that is getting in the way. So to do this, I'm gonna actually have to take the fan off and put it back on after I install the cooler. So that is something to keep in mind. Check your clearances before you set this down because had I put thermal paste on, I would be very upset right now because I would have had to probably do a reapplication. So now you can get them started. So just get it kind of going a little bit and then get it started on the other side and then trade back and forth. You wanna be kind of spreading out the tension as you go. You don't wanna tighten them down all the way on one side while one side's completely loose. You wanna kinda of change it up so that you're uh, not applying too much pressure all at the same time to one side of the socket. So now at this point we have actually installed the cooler itself and uh, as you can see, it most definitely blocks the PCI Express slot on an ITX board. So that is something to keep in mind. Here's what it looks like without the fan installed. And you can see with the fan, I'm still gonna clear the memory it looks like, uh, which is nice. So the fan's gonna be sucking air upward. Um, so it's gonna be carrying some of the heat from the memory up into the cooling block and then allowing that to dissipate. Another thing you can do is actually install a second fan uh, in the event that I wanted to set this up in a push-pull configuration. So you could be pulling air up from the bottom and then pushing it out through the top and really get some uh, premium performance out of that if uh, say you had an overclockable chip in uh, you know, a small case on a micro ATX board and uh, you wanted to be able to handle it uh, that way. So that is uh, now what I'm going to do is put the fan back on here. So now I'm gonna slide the fan underneath, kind of get it aligned, and then pull the clips up on one side, pull the clips up on the other side, and boom, the fan is now installed. I'm off just a little bit. I can probably, can I scoot it over? I don't know if I can. I think I'm too close to the uh, heat pipes to scoot it anymore. So yeah, it's, the fan is actually gonna hang over a little bit on the edge, but that's not a big deal because you can see on uh, the other side, I am coming up right up against uh, the heat pipes over here where the fan uh, is currently sitting. But the fan does completely cover the block itself, the uh, fins, so that is good. Zoom out a little bit more so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, so you've got the memory modules, and again, these are you know fairly low profile. There's not huge fins on them. Uh, if you did have big fins, then you would have to move the fan up to the top making this a little bit less of a low profile CPU cooler. However, if you're focusing on low profile for your build, um, you should probably really consider focusing on low profile memory modules as well. Uh, but again, I can't caution enough two things with this particular uh, CPU cooler. Uh, number one, again, during the install process, showing how this works, I skipped the thermal compound, don't do that. That has nothing to do with the cooler itself, just me repeating that one more time. So that mistake doesn't get made because that would be very bad. Um, the actual cooler itself, uh, not hard to install at all. It's that same SecuFirm uh, 2 system that they've been using for a, quite a while now, since I started doing Tech Uploaded, and I've always loved it. It's always been super reliable. Uh, they do have these holes up here for actually screwing in, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, you do have to remove the fan and then put it back on, but it's super easy to get back on with these clips, so that's not a big deal. Um, again, low profile memory modules are recommended. If you don't have the room to put the fan on the top, you can do push-pull with this. Um, and then uh, again, this does hang over. Let me turn the board over. It hangs over the ITX board um, you know, by probably two inches or so. So that's another thing to keep in mind if space is really limited. So while this is a low profile cooler, um, you know, I, given how much space this is taking up and you know, the situation with the PCI Express slot on ITX, um, this probably isn't designed really so much for an ITX build.
Okay, so there you have it. The uh, NHC14S holding it backwards. Um, you can get this. I looked online. Uh, it's running about 80 bucks on Newegg and Amazon, and they both had it in stock. So uh, very nice cooler. I really like it. I like the look of it. Um, it's a nice alternative to a tower cooler. Uh, if you don't have room for a radiator, you're doing something in a smaller case. Uh, but like I said, uh, ITX boards pretty much uh, looking like a no-go. Um, if I changed the orientation, um, I don't know if it would make that much of a difference. I suppose I could try that and see. So um, I'm looking at it though and thinking that I'm still going to have an issue based off of how far it's coming out. But you know what? I'll try it and we'll see. It's really easy to change this up. So why not give it a whirl? Um, but before I do that, you know, kind of some of my other thoughts. I do like that it does go over the memory slots and you get a little bit of extra cooling there for your memory modules. That is nice. Um, and again, that Secu Firm 2 install system, I'm starting to cut myself. I knew I was going to do that. Uh, makes it so, so, so easy to install and the little ingenious holes that they put in the top there for being able to get the nice thin included screwdriver down in there is a very nice touch. And that is where that Zalman cooler fell incredibly short. Uh, getting it actually tightened down to the motherboard was nearly impossible. So getting it off is gonna be probably uh, equally as challenging. But uh, overall, um, again, not really surprised um, by how the install went and how easy it was because it's a kind of, I've just kind of come to expect that. Um, I'm obviously kind of a knock to a fanboy, and it's not just because they uh, are always really good to the channel. They've just yet to deliver a product that uh, hasn't impressed me. And the cooling performance off of the uh, NHD 15S that's sitting off to my side, I used the NHD 15 and um, found that it was darn near uh, about the same as actually doing an all-in-one liquid cooling unit. Uh, now I'm sure the custom ones you can get uh, definitely better results, but. If you're looking for something quick between air and water, they come pretty darn close. Um, I'm not gonna be able to test the actual performance of this as far as temperatures go until I actually finish the home theater PC build, uh, but uh, I will mention it in that video uh, when I get to that point so you'll be able to see the cooling results and the numbers that come out of this uh, at the time that I actually, um, actually after I finish that, I'll probably just post a video called follow-up NHC14S results. So if that's not already posted, if you uh, are watching this in the future, then be on the lookout for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch this thing around right now just because I can. So uh, let's see what happens when I move this thing uh, to a different orientation. You know, this goes a lot easier when I'm uh, not having to try to keep things on camera. I can really fly through this when I'm just doing it off camera. Technically, I'm on camera, right? Okay, so kind of got everything going there. Um, that's kind of what it's looking like right now. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the fan back on just, you know, to make it official. So now it's installed and this is what you have to deal with. You can see that the clearance for uh, the PCI Express slot right here is still going to be uh, a problem. You're not going to be able to get a graphics card in there. So um, ITX, not going to cut it. Although one thing to note is other than that, other than that issue with the clearance on the... Um, slot for PCI Express due to the heat pipes. I just want to be absolutely sure of that. Just figured I'd double check just to be absolutely sure. But if you were going to run, if you know, the general, what I'm trying to get at here is don't use this on an ITX port. <laughs> because if you want to run the PCI Express slot, uh, unless you have some kind of strange setup where you have uh, a case where you can run a cable from the PCI Express to the card and, and get around that situation, you do have enough room to get in one of those cables. Um, you know, to run the PCI Express to a different location in the case. But if you wanted to mount the card directly on here and you were in a standard ITX based case, uh, that's going to be a problem. You're not going to be able to do it. But uh, changing the orientation eliminated the overhang on the board. So if you were running onboard graphics and just kind of using this for maybe a server or something, uh, you'll notice that now, boy, this thing's heavy. It does not overhang on the board at all, actually. It, uh, the board completely kind of fits underneath of this. The fan almost covers, or the cooler covers basically the majority of the ITX board itself, um, including the memory still for the most part. So changing the orientation to the way that I did for ITX actually is optimal. You just can't use your PCI Express slot, at least on this ASRock board. So 
Um, other than that, yeah, like I said, easy install. I think it looks nice. Um, I happen to like the look of air coolers. I don't know why. I think I'm just old school. Um, and uh, there's not a whole lot else to say here, really. You do have the option to put another fan on top, like I said, if you want to do push-pull and you got the space to do it. But um, I think this is really good for if you're going to do a small, like, micro ATX build. Uh, strangely enough, the case that I have for uh, the home theater PC right now has a micro ATX motherboard in it. So something like this would actually have been really beneficial in that case because uh, I would have had the clearance on the PCI Express slot more than likely. And they said that they did redesign this so that on um, certain ATX and extended ATX board boards where they have that the topmost PCI Express slot is often really close to the socket. And I've run into issues with clearance on that before. This supposedly eliminates that issue with the clearance on that slot uh, according to uh, the materials from Noctua. So I think you should be safe other than ITX on your clearances for PCIe. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying out the temperatures on this thing. You know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on my various social media channels. Uh, Instagram is back up alive and running, so that's Tech Uploaded. I'm also on Twitter as Tech Uploaded. There is a Tech Uploaded Facebook page. And of course, you can shoot me an email at techuploaded at gmail.com. You know the drill. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.